so here we go on our second day of 2.5 notes. You just add it into the notes that you've already got. You don't have to do anything new um, in your table of contents. Here is kind of what we talked about yesterday. Literal equations contain two or more variables. That should already be in your notes. Would you go up and check? And then if you have not done so, would you either highlight or circle literal equations? And then a formula is an algebraic expression that relates two or more quantities. These two things should already be in your notes, but go back and check. If they're not there, add them in. So yesterday you worked on solving for y. Today we're going to look at some basic formulas and how do we solve those for something else. So I would like you to write all of these down. Go through if you can go faster than me. That's totally cool then you just fast forward and check to make sure. So this one says A equals 1 half B times H. Because it's helpful for me, I'm going to highlight, let's see, I want to solve for B. So I'm going to highlight that just so that I can see it. If you want to work with highlighters or colored pencils, it might be good for you. So then I'm going to go and I'm going to think of, all right, when I'm solving equations, first step is distributive property. Any of that? No. Okay, second, um, I've got to combine like terms. Nope, nothing there. So now, if I want to get B by itself, that means I have to move this one half and this H to the other side. Doesn't matter which one you deal with first. I'm going to deal with the one half. And so, how do I undo one half? I times by 2 over 1. So over here, I times by 2 over 1. Do I need to write the over 1? I do not. So this cancels out, goes to 1. So I've got 2 A's are equal to B H. I still want to get B by itself. So this is B times H. Now what do I do so that I can undo times H? Right. I divide by H. So this isn't necessarily any harder. You just really, really need to know the process. If you know the process, you're fine. If you can show your work, you're fine. If you can't, then you need to stop and check in. All right, next one. I interest equals principal times rate times time. They want to solve for R. That's right here. I'm going to highlight it. So what I then have to undo are the P and the T. And what are those doing to the R? Right, they're multiplying. How do you undo multiply? You divide. Can you divide both of them at the same time? Yes, you can. So process is that I'm dividing by P over T. So therefore, my R equals the interest divided by the principal and time. This one, D equals RT. I bet you could do that one for yourself. Ready? Go. Yep. Divide by T. So D over T equals rate. We last year did the dirt triangle. Do you remember that? So distance equals rate times time. And if you had the distance and the rate, you divide. If you have the distance and the time, you divide. If you have the rate and the time, you multiply. Now, this one gets a little bit more complicated because there's a plus sign in there. So let's see. I want to solve for W. W is right here. So thinking about the process of solving an equation. I draw my line down. Can't, what do I get rid of first? Well, I want to move everything over to this side, so I've got to undo this right here. This says 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So what is this 2 times the length doing? This says add, but what sign is really in front of it? positive. So I subtract 2L, subtract 2L, that's not a 21. So I get P minus 2, I'll make the L like this. And that equals 2W. Alright, I've got one more step. What is this 2 doing to the W? You got it. It's multiplying. So therefore, my answer, if I had the width, I could do the perimeter 
minus 2 times the length, all divided by 2. Now you'll notice that I'm switching the w over to the left. Does it really matter? And the answer is no, it's just more comfortable. It doesn't matter if the w is on the right or the left. All right, this one. This is an i. Is it an i? No, that's not an i. It's an l. But anyway, whatever it is, I'm going to make it an l. Um, because we've still got this. Now it's going backwards. So I want to figure out for P. So I'm going to highlight that. Here's my P. And what is my process for undoing this? So again, process is the most important. When will I ever use this in life? You'll use the problem solving process. I'm going to put a parenthesis around here just to remember. If that's true, what do I undo first over on this side? I cannot move the minus 2w yet. I've got to multiply by 2 first. So times by 2. These two cancel out. This 2 doesn't go through it over here. But it does multiply on this side as well. So now I've got 2 times the length equals the perimeter minus 2w. Now I want to get the perimeter all by itself. What do I undo? Got it, plus two w's. So two times the length plus two times the w equals the perimeter. Is that true? You bet it is. So this is nice doing it with formulas. Here is what you're gonna have the opportunity to do on your home fund. So I thought we had better run through a couple of them. Everything on this page we're gonna solve for x. But you may notice that there's more than one x in each one of them. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight all of the x's that I see. Now you might say, can't I do ax minus x and find something? No, because this is an a. But I am going to do something that might help. What should be in front of this x? A 1. Would you please write that down? Now, hmm, I see an x in this. So I'm going to do the distributive property, but backwards. So here's what that would look like. I'm going to take an x out of both. So divide by x, divide by x. If I take the x out of here, what's left? A. If I take the x out of here, what's left? Minus 1. Do you see why it was important that I do this? Otherwise, you'd think that just kind of disappears. So x times a minus 1, these two things are equivalent, equals c. Now, if my goal is to get that x all by itself, what is this a minus 1 doing to it? Yeah, it's timesing. So how do you undo times? You divide by a minus 1. So over here, I divide by a minus 1. And this then cancels out. That's the whole point. It goes to 1. So I'm left with 1x over here. And over on this side, I've got c over a minus 1. So this is all process. You cannot come up with a number answer. It's just, do you understand the process? If you don't understand the process, this will be awful. If you can follow the steps, it will be OK. It will be weird, but it will be OK. All right, let's try this one. Solving for x. Grab a highlighter, color pencil, something. Here's an x, here's an x. Oh man, what happened over here when I did that? Yes, but look at there's this t on the bottom. So I've actually got to undo that t first because there's like a parentheses up here. How do you undo the t? It's dividing, so you times t times t. So what happens is my t's cancel out and go to 1, and I'm left with r x. Yes, rewrite it. You cannot do this in your head. Equals t. So I'm going to go back in and highlight. I want my x's. What did I do over here? I pulled an x out. If that's the case, what is left? R plus s equals t. Okay, now look back at this one. Then what did we do? The x is multiplied. Yeah, so I'm going to divide by the r plus s, divide by the r plus s 
Oh my gosh, isn't this fun? Yeah, maybe not. But I like it, and someday it will click in your head if it's not clicking right now. So that equals T over R plus S. All right, let's do one more, which is similar but a little bit different. Line down. Do you see that there's an X on both sides, which is a little bit problematic? It's right here, and it's right here. So I think back to my steps. I see distributive property. You should do the distributive property. So 3 times x is 3x minus 12 equals x. Now this looks just like a problem that you had yesterday. You have to get all the x's to one side. So I'm going to choose to move the x's to the right because it will be faster. How do you do that? Well, I subtract 3x's and shoop, down. This cancels out, so my 3x minus 3x cancel out. I drop down my negative 12, and x minus 3x gives me negative 2x's. Now, how do you undo the negative 2x's? Yes, you divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, so I'm out of room, but I would just say 6 equals x. Oh my gosh, look at that. It totally just solved. Oh, that wasn't so bad. All right. Now, most of the rest of these have other letters in them. But, hey, that was just a good review. So, you do have a home fun assignment. I will make a video help for it. But do the best you can. Talk to you later.